seen a big block in an 80 series. There probably is some around, but I haven't seen one. Um, and definitely I haven't seen one blown injected, you know, a 500 cube, um, you know, on methanol, making pretty, pretty serious power. Well, we can throw five, six, seven guys in it. Um, we can all go in it and go out on the track at Power Cruise. So Power Cruise is an event uh, run by um, a, a fellow in Queensland, and he does one in Queensland, Sydney, Melbourne, I think, and I think he might do one in the US or something. And you go out on the track, a circuit, and you just drive around, race with your mates, do big burnouts, um, kind of whatever goes. So that's, that, that was kind of what the idea was. I thought, everyone can hop in it, we can go out and burn tyres up. I'm gonna need a fair bit of power, you know, if we're loaded up, just go and burn tyres up and have a laugh, you know, that, that was kind of the idea. Uh, originally, really, it, that motor was built prior to putting it in it, and it wasn't really gonna go in that. It was gonna go in another car, race car that I've got, a Tirana. It's relatively standard, other than the two-speed power glide gearbox. Um, it's just got a single straight tail shaft, it still runs the, the factory diff. Um, nothing really serious under that. We just pulled it apart, removed the LSD, and I set up, a, I welded up the, the center gears to, to turn it into a lock diff. Um, the future plans for it are probably not a hell of a lot. It was kind of, it's exactly what it was that I wanted to do. Keep it relatively standard looking, but have this cool motor hanging out of the bonnet. We did speak, oh, imagine if we tubbed it and a few other things like that, it'd be really cool, but it takes it away from what it really is and that's why we said nah let's leave it you know what i mean we're having fun with it let's not pull it off the road until we really have to you know what i mean I'd rather take it out and have fun with it okay so normally i do two part series when i do these rig rundowns but because this is all motor and not a lot else going on i'm going to jump straight into it so we'll get under the hood of this thing and see what's happening under there okay so i'll try and remember everything that's going on with this engine but basically it's a 502 chevy so that's an aftermarket crate engine pretty much and they've, all they've had to do is really cut off the old engine mounts, weld new mounts in there, and it fit pretty good. So being a four-wheel drive, it's got a lot of space in here, so the 502 drops straight in. Internals, got all the, all the fruit inside. It's got all forged internals, H-beam rods, flat top pistons. The heads are still cast iron heads, but they've been ported and flowed, big valves and all that to suit the supercharger. Supercharger is a YN671 blower, so that's pretty standard in the street machine sort of industry there. Um, top hat with methanol injection. Supercharger's pushing out about 15 pound into the motor and it's putting out around eight to 900 horsepower. Now this hasn't been properly dynoed uh, in this car, so that's sort of an estimate, but it's really up there being methanol, obviously supercharged big block. You can't expect much less. All right, so I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail about the methanol side of things as well, because it's the first car we've had on here that runs methanol. So the whole idea of that is obviously to help with the power. You can get a lot more power than methanol because it burns a lot cooler and it also burns slower, which means when the uh, spark plug ignites it, it actually kind of explodes a lot more through the stroke. As you can imagine, the piston goes down, the burn happens a lot slower, creating a lot more power. Also by it burning cooler, it helps with obviously being a big block, the thing's not gonna heat up as fast. So you don't need massive radiator like this thing looks pretty standard almost for an 80 series but obviously aluminium upgraded and all that, but it, it really helps with that cooling and increases the power. Now the, the fuel to run it through, it goes through the main tank and there's actually an electric pump that pumps into this tank here, which is sort of like a surge tank in a way. And then that gravity feeds a mechanical fuel pump that's run off the uh, camshaft. So it's all kind of mechanically assisted, so there's no electronics to, to fail. It's like quite a reliable system. And then that runs up into the injector hats and down the engines. All right, looking at the external of this 80, look, there's not a lot going on. It has been lowered, so that's one thing. But for an 80 series, it's pretty goddamn clean. So obviously not being on the four drive tracks, it stays a lot nicer than normal. The diff itself is actually standard. I was quite surprised to hear that, but all he's done is pulled the center out, welded with the spider gears together to make it sort of a all-time block diff for doing the burnouts of course um, but other than that it's pretty clean obviously a seven seater as well he we was saying he likes to take all the boys in the back when they go down to power cruise so that's been put in there uh, you won't find a fridge or a swag or a rooftop tent in this 80 series all right inside what is it the second or third cruiser i've been in this one's a bit different though so pretty standard dash like you mentioned the outside and the inside is hasn't really been touched but it is quite nice and one day, someone will probably buy this as a rigid digit and want to make it a 4B again, who knows? 
But you've got smack bang in the middle, your rev counter, very important. Don't worry about speed, you wanna know what revs you're at. So the shifter, obviously it's a two-speed power glide, so you should put a um, mechanical shifter in there, BNM Quicksilver it looks like. You've got a water temp, that's important, and then your oil pressure, also important. Other than that, there's not a lot else to look at. So very simple, you pretty much just throttle, brake, drive it hard and that's it. Now, also on the side here, being methanol, you, wanna, you don't want that fuel sitting in the block because what can happen, it dumps that much fuel in there that if you turn it off with the key, it's still pouring in that injector hat there and it can actually flood the block. So next time you start it, it pretty much hydrolocks. So you actually pull a lever which has a three-way valve on it and it recirculates that methanol back into the tank, leans the engine out and just as it's about to stall, that's when you turn it off. And that's how you can save it so next time you start it, it's a lot easier. Methanol is one of those things, it's good for power but you gotta know what you're doing when you're starting it, stopping it. It also has a lot of issues when it comes to like um, corrosion as well. So it's quite a corrosive fuel. So if it's left for a long time, a lot of guys flood the stuff out and put some standard fuel in there, but it's good. It's got, this one's got some additive in it, so it can actually handle a bit of that time there as well, where it sits there and doesn't corrode the thing. But um, the shows in that, that he goes to, he sort of runs a certain oil in there. It's, it's some cheaper oil because there's that much sort of heat and expansion in the rings that once it's just started and stopped, for a few shows just by idling around. The methanol actually kind of runs past the rings into the oil. So it's kind of a high maintenance engine when it's used in that, in that type. So when you're around the track and the thing gets hot, it runs all right. But doing the starting and stopping, you want to be careful with um, the mixture of that methanol into your oil. All right, so that has been a bit of an overview of this 80 series. One of the most powerful ones in Australia, I'm pretty sure. The only other thing I didn't mention here is the exhaust coming straight out the heads. There's no mufflers in this thing and dumping out the side. So we can't really start it here, obviously, because it's like, you know, a bit late at night. I did get a bit of a shot running into the place. I wish I could go for a ride, but um, maybe next time. Make sure after you watch the video, click subscribe if you enjoyed it and uh, keep an eye out for the next rig rundown. Peace. So we've just been ripping around in this thing, you know, on the flat, but there's a jump over there. I'm going to jump that, but first you got to hit subscribe. <laughs>